Louis de Zoyza at 1.26 in the morning on the 25th of September 2020, you shot dead Sergeant Matt Rattener. He was the custody sergeant at Croydon Police Station. He had devoted his life to public service. He put himself in the way of danger to protect the public and to protect and safeguard those who came into custody. You have robbed Sue Bushby of their future life together, Diane Peachy of her stepson, Luke Rattener of his father, and Jessica Williams and James Young of their brother. They are all rightly immensely proud of the man you killed. They recognise that you bear the sole responsibility for his murder. They say in their victim impact statements that for the officers who were on duty that night, they have nothing but support, sympathy, admiration and respect. Luke Rattener himself is a police officer. He knows as well as anyone the dangers they face day in, day out, and the difficult circumstances in which they operate. You said that you had an autistic meltdown. You said that you had diminished responsibility. The jury disagreed. The jury found you guilty of murder. The sentence for murder is set by law. It is life imprisonment. So I sentence you to life imprisonment. I make a statutory surcharge order in the required sum, and I have already made a deprivation order in respect of some specified items that were seized from you. I am satisfied that you will be held in conditions that will ensure that your medical needs can be accommodated and that you can be treated in accordance with your rights. The operational manager for the Category A team at His Majesty's Prison Belmarsh has confirmed that they have the resources and facilities to provide the care that is required. The Secretary of State can, if necessary, make an order for your detention in hospital. I refused an application to adjourn sentence. I am satisfied that there has been ample time to obtain any information that is relevant to sentencing. I have a great deal of medical evidence about your condition and I have been given very great assistance from your lawyers. I have all the information that is necessary to pass sentence. The law requires the court to decide whether to set a minimum term order or a whole life order. A minimum term order means that you can be considered for release after the minimum term. A whole life order means that you remain in custody for the rest of your life. A minimum term order must be set unless the court is required to make a whole life order. The court is required to make a whole life order if the seriousness of the offence means that a minimum term order should not be made. A sentence of imprisonment for life with a whole life order is a sentence of last resort. It is for cases of the most extreme gravity. It is reserved for cases where that is what is required to secure just punishment. In the event of any doubt as to whether that standard is reached, a minimum term order is likely to be appropriate. If the seriousness of the offence is exceptionally high, then the starting point is a whole life order. The law identifies cases that are normally of exceptionally high seriousness. They include the murder of a police officer or a prison officer in the execution of his or her duty. In those cases, the starting point must normally be a whole life order. 
you murdered a police officer in the execution of his duty. So this case is within a category where Parliament has said the starting point is normally a whole life order. Depending on the facts of the case, the starting point can be changed from a whole life order to a minimum term order. But that can only be done if it is justified. And it will only be justified if the seriousness of the offence is not exceptionally high. After deciding the starting point, the court must consider any aggravating or mitigating factors. If the starting point is a whole life order, then depending on those factors, the court could impose either a whole life order or a minimum term order. So the final sentence depends on the starting point and then the balance of those other factors. I turn to the events of the 25th of September 2020. The events are captured on CCTV and body-worn video evidence. I am sure of the following. One, when you were stopped, you were in possession of a gun. The gun was a revolver which had six chambers. Each chamber contained a bulleted cartridge. You were also in possession of a pouch containing seven additional bulleted cartridges. Each of those cartridges was suitable for firing from the gun. Two, you knew you were in possession of the gun and cartridges when you were stopped by the police. You knew the gun worked. You knew the cartridges worked with the gun. You knew that each cartridge was likely to kill if fired directly at a person's chest. Three, you had no lawful or good reason for the possession of the loaded gun or the court cartridges. Four, you deliberately concealed the gun from the police. You told them you had cannabis to focus their attention on that. You did that in the hope that it would make it less likely that they would find the gun. When the police found the seven cartridges, you lied and said that they were not real. Five, you made strenuous and successful efforts to retrieve the gun whilst you were handcuffed behind your back. There was no lawful or good reason for you to do that. Six, you had time and space to consider what to do. It was 50 minutes between the time you were stopped and the time you shot Sergeant Rattaner. There were eight minutes after arrival at the police station before you were brought out of the van. You had already retrieved the gun at that point. During those eight minutes, you were left entirely alone without any distraction you were able to think about what you would do. Seven, you posed a lethal risk, not just to Sergeant Rattaner, but also to the two other officers who were in the holding room, and also to any other officers and anyone else in the area. Eight, you had twice been arrested before without incident. On this occasion, the video evidence shows that you were treated with conspicuous compassion and kindness, or, as Luke Rattner put it in his victim impact statement, with respect, dignity and understanding. None of the officers gave any reason for you to feel at risk of harm or threat. Nine. You did not have an autistic meltdown. Your actions were voluntary. They were controlled. They were deliberate. You acted in cold blood. 10. You intended to kill Sergeant Rattaner. You deliberately aimed the gun at his chest at near point blank range. The first shot caused fatal injuries. It caused Sergeant Rattaner immediately to fall to the ground. 
even as he fell, you re-aimed and you fired a second shot at him. Parliament has said that the murder of a police officer in the execution of his or her duty is normally an offence where the seriousness is exceptionally high. Parliament has recognised that there may be cases where that is not so. I have considered the impact of your autism on your culpability. In doing so, I have paid close attention to the Sentencing Council's guideline. You were not having an autistic meltdown. You were in control of your actions. Expert evidence during the trial indicated that autism does not cause people to be violent. Autistic people are no more likely to commit violent offences than anyone else. Autism did have an impact on your social communication and your social interaction, but you were able to make yourself understood. That included when you requested an appropriate adult and a solicitor any communication difficulty or any difficulty with social interaction had no bearing on your decision to kill Sergeant Ratana. Autism can also re result in restricted and repetitive patterns of behaviour, activities or interests. It may be that this helps explain your interest in firearms, but it does not help explain your decision to kill Sergeant Ratama. Autism also affects how you perceive things. For example, you are not tolerant of noise. But again, that does not explain your decision to kill Sergeant Ratama. I am satisfied that you were able to exercise appropriate judgment. You were able to make rational choices. You were able to understand the nature and consequence of your actions. There was no sufficient connection between your autism and the murder to reduce your culpability by reason of your autism. Autism is not to blame for your decision to murder Sergeant Ratana. You are to blame for that. There is no reason to depart from the normal rule that the seriousness of this type of offence is to be regarded as exceptionally high. I therefore adopt the starting point of a whole life order, but that is then subject to the other factors and the aggravating and mitigating balance. I turn first to the aggravating factors. Sergeant Ratana was performing a public service and exercising a public duty. That factor is inherent in the starting point of a whole life order. It is not, therefore, a separate aggravating factor. Planning and premeditation. Your decision to kill Sergeant Ratana was not immediate or panicked. There was a degree of both planning and premeditation. Prior to being stopped by the police... I accept that you had no plan to murder a police officer. But once you had been stopped and detained, and the period thereafter, you did form a plan to do so. That plan took shape in a number of ways. You lied to the officers. You said you did not have anything that could hurt them. You told them that the cartridges that they found were not real. You pointed them to the, in the direction of the cannabis in your bag, diverting their attention from your body where the gun was concealed. You went to considerable and probably painful lengths to retrieve the gun in a way that was undetected. Once you had hold of the gun, you kept it hidden under your coat. As you moved from the van to the holding cell, you sought to keep your back close to the wall to help conceal the gun. All of those things show a degree of planning and premeditation, albeit I accept that was all within the context of the period between the stop and your arrival in the holding cell. It is nonetheless a significant aggravating feature. 
use of a firearm. You acquired the gun and then you manufactured the bulleted cartridges for it. You loaded each of the chambers of the gun and you took it with you with other cartridges as you took a journey in public. You took it into the police station. Those actions created a significant risk to members of the public and to all those in the police station, including other police officers who are also exercising public duties. After the lethal shot, you fired three further shots. They, and particularly the third and fourth shot, posed a high risk to the lives of two other police officers. Your use of a firearm is a further significant aggravating feature. The use of a gun to commit the murder means in itself that the seriousness of the offence is particularly high. I turn to mitigating factors. First, your upbringing. You had a difficult upbringing. You were bullied at school. Your father beat you. That is sad and distressing. But you did well at school. You got three A's at A-level. You had a job at HMRC. And you did well at that job and were valued in it. You had a girlfriend. And I have read many statements from those who knew you, including your former girlfriend and including colleagues at work. The difficulties you had to endure in your childhood is a mitigating factor, but it does not significantly reduce the seriousness of this offence. Age. You were 23 at the time of the offence. You are now 26. You were highly intelligent. You had studied independently. You were in work, and you were living independently. There is no evidence of any lack of maturity. A whole life order can only be imposed on an offender who is over the age of 21. You were over that age, but not substantially so. And you are still within the age bracket where neurological development can impact on maturity. But you are close to the top end of that age bracket. Your age is a mitigating factor. Good character. You had no previous convictions or cautions for any offence. That is a mitigating factor in your favour, and I take it into account. But its weight is limited, because I am sure that you had been engaged in unlawful conduct in relation to drugs and firearms. Autism. I have already explained that your autism does not significantly reduce your culpability. It is a mitigating factor to the extent that it affects the impact of imprisonment on you. I have considered detailed academic research on the experience of autistic prisoners. That impact is complex. In some respects, it is possible that you may have less difficulty enduring loss of liberty and a structured regime than others. But in many other respects, it is likely that you will find imprisonment more difficult, particularly in how you deal with staff and other prisoners and the effect of noise and other sensory stimuli on you. On balance, I accept that you are likely to find prison more difficult than a neurotypical prisoner. I take that into account. Your injuries. After shooting Sergeant Matt Rattner twice, you fired two more shots. One hit the wall of the cell, mercifully missing the two officers who were bravely restraining you. The fourth hit you in the neck. This resulted in bleeding and a blood clot, which travelled to your brain and has caused some damage. It has also resulted in physical problems. It means you now use a wheelchair and you have real problems with your communication often using a whiteboard to help you communicate. It is entirely due to your deliberate and voluntary actions that you have those injuries. But I have regard to the impact of imprisonment on you in the light of the totality of your injuries. I am satisfied that adequate treatment can be provided in custody. 
Even so, I recognise that custody is likely to be more difficult, both because of your injuries and because of your autism. That is a significant factor to consider when deciding whether to impose a whole life order. Impact on your family. I have read the statement of your mother and extracts of it were read by Mr Khan. I recognise the impact that your sentence will have on your family, but that is not a significant mitigating factor. The aggravating factors, in my judgment, outweigh the mitigating factors. The aggravating effect of your use of a gun and the planning and premeditation outweigh the mitigating effects of your personal mitigation, including the impact of custody. There is therefore no justification to depart from the starting point of a whole life order. That is what Parliament has decided should normally apply as a starting point to the murder of a police officer in the execution of their duty. The seriousness of the offence means that a minimum term order is not justified. A whole life order must be imposed. Louis de Zoyza, I sentence you to imprisonment for life. I impose a whole life order. That means you will remain in custody for the rest of your life. You may now be taken from the dock.